earlier this week, I was catching up with a friend on Facebook, and we went to ministry school together, fire school ministry. Really awesome guy. Um, and right as we were finishing our conversation, he kind of ended it with saying, hey man, really great talking to you, be blessed. And it really encouraged me, it was a big blessing for me. So I thought, man, I'll give him a prophetic word real quick if I, if I get one to uh, share with him to encourage him before we end our conversation. And immediately I saw a big, um, a big, thick, round tree. I mean, bigger than that, but just massive. Just the, I saw just part of the trunk. It was massive. It was huge. The, the, the bark was dark and rich. And I thought, immediately I knew that the tree was him. And I thought, man, He's, he's, he's planted firm in the spirit, he's deep, but I had the impression that the tree was a thousand years old. And immediately I thought, well that's like him. The, the days that he spends in prayer, the days that he spends in God's presence is like a thousand years in the spirit. He's developing currency, resonance, wealth, um, power, authority. He's cultivating his relationship with God. He's doing all of these things in that place. You know, Matthew 6.6 6 says, when you pray, go into your room or closet and shut the door behind you, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will openly reward you. So our, our rewards aren't just like we get a prize for doing it. It's the fact that we made an investment in heaven, and heaven yields returns that are always significant, always a hundredfold, meaning the maximum fold you can get out of a return. The verse that says, you know, a thousand years is as a day and a day is as a thousand years is in uh, 2 Peter 3.8. Now obviously, <clears throat> that passage there is really eschatological. It's talking about, you know, understanding the end times and how God's patiently waiting um, so that we get His fullness before He comes and judges the world. A lot of people are like, well, God's not judging. I don't have to worry about it. Or they're too fixated on the judgment of God and all this stuff. And, you know, Peter starts out the verse and he says, I am writing you, beloved, and I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord, the Savior, through your apostles. And it's, he's like reminding what these people who have gone before us have done or other people in our generation, what they've, what they've said, what they've spoken into the atmosphere, the investment they've made in heavenly places. You know, eternity is not bound by time. It's not something that, you know, we, we, we can't understand certain complexities of Scripture because we've, we've, we've tried to put the heavenly inside the box of the earthly, which is something I talk about often on, on the show here. But um, we got that, when we have that prophetic sight and that prophetic vision, we can see beyond the realm, the realm of time and see that when there is no time, a thousand years really is like a day, and a day really is like a thousand years. So. One day you spend in prayer can go a thousand years into the future. Our earthly growth, here's some notes I wrote down from that revelation, but earthly growth is a response to a growth we've already obtained in heavenly places. So I just encourage you guys to really not just view time as prayer as something that you have to do. You have to sit in the corner with a dunce hat on and be submissive to Jesus and do these certain things certain ways. The time is prayer, in prayer is building our future. It's impacting our future. It's impacting those around us. And the last house, well, the last church I was at was called the Father's House. And one time I was in there and I was leaning against the sound booth. And I thought, man, because of some person a thousand years ago decided to choose Jesus and live for Jesus, and they allowed His kingdom, His love, to fill their heart. That they. They became so in love with him that they impacted their generation to such a degree that a thousand years later, here I am. And I, because of that person, have a direct relationship and impact from their life. Because they chose to live their life, the reverberal effect of that is that I know Jesus. It can trace it throughout the his, his train of history. So, um, and then I thought, man, I want to be that person for someone a thousand years in the future. I want my life to be so impactful that someone a thousand years from now will live for Jesus because I, I allowed, I answered the call in my heart as well. So build for the future, just in here, you know. Don't worry about taking the world. Take the world in prayer, and then you'll see the the strongholds of the world start to fall already, and you'll walk through them. Um, Jesus was over the 
overcome things because he always overcame them in prayer ahead of time. So when it came time to walk it out, you know, the mountains would move, the, the, the death would flee, and life would enter a corpse, and they would rise back to life. Um, you know, sickness would flee the body because he had understood who he was, who his father was, and he always had that communion with God as a top priority, and that's the place where he lived to him. That's how he could say, I only do what I see the Father doing. And so it's just that divine, constant connection with Jesus, just living from that place with Jesus. The more you hang out with people, the more you start to develop their mannerisms. I got certain friends that I hung out with throughout my life and I, I say certain things because it's how they always said it. I want to live my life and act like Jesus <laughs> because I'm always hanging out with Him and spending time in prayer with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit in that, in that sweet communion, that sweet intimate and holy place. And the more you begin to spend time there, you'll have revelation to share, you'll have power to share, you'll have love to share. It'll be genuine, it'll be real, it'll be true. You'll see it have an impact on those around you. There's been times I, some of the most powerful times I've had in ministry, I wasn't in front of people preaching or speaking or doing video or podcasting or writing or some of the things I do. I just was in prayer that day at the feet of Jesus, walking with Jesus, running with Jesus, dancing with Jesus, just spending my, my time with Him. And all of a sudden, those around me look at me like, what's going on? They, they, they tangibly feel the presence of God, a God that they don't even know or they're not even sure exists. So spend that time in prayer. When you leave that place, you don't leave the presence. The presence of God goes with you. The presence of God baptizes you. It changes every fiber of your being. And he just, he just walks ahead of you. You know, it says in Matthew that we open doors in the earth that have already been opened in heaven. And we shut doors in the earth that have already been shut in heaven. So we have that pattern to follow and enforce on the earth. So I just bless you guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, just as, as you go on this next week, maybe I'll post another video soon. But until then, just really cultivate that intimate, sweet, awesome, good, Holy Ghost place in Jesus. Just spend time. It could be minutes. It could be hours. The minutes could be a thousand years. And the hours, if it's just worthless repetition, could only be minutes in heavenly places. But that one moment, that one glimpse, that one minute, sincere connection with God can rock the world a thousand years from now. Just like because those who went before us had such a powerful life in ministry, they're rocking the world even today. We're always talking about David. We're talking about what Jesus did. We're talking about what the apostles did. We're talking about what great figures in church history like John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth did. You know, years later, just because they grabbed hold of something divine, something you can't see with your eyes, but you can see with the eyes of the spirit that opens up that spiritual, supernatural dimension around you. So love you guys. Keep watching and uh, cheerio.